Hello, good afternoon class. Welcome to module number two of our subject, Art Appreciation. And today we're going to discuss the functions and subjects of art. So since we did not have enough time to, to, <clears throat> to discuss this last Tuesday because of the class suspension, I, I am going to record my presentation and hopefully you will find time to watch uh, my recorded presentation during your free time, okay? <clears throat> So for today, we're going to identify the function of art and also determine the type, kind, and source of subject of art. All right, so we, before we head into that, no, just a little bit of emphasis on the art history versus art appreciation. So I hope naging klaro tayo during the preliminary period ko ano yung pagkakaiba ng dalawang ito. So for the art history, we're particularly... Uh, focused on the who was the artist, when was the art made, when, for what reason, anong context. Now, basically, pinpointing the history of the art. Whereas for the art appreciation, <clears throat> it talks about exploration and analysis of art forms. No, appreciating um, the, the the elements that the art has. Okay, let's remember that uh, appreciating an art. Uh, can be highly subjective, no? Depende, depending on an individual's personal tastes and preference. Okay, so let's go now to the functions of art. So as you can see here, al allow me to give you an example, no? Yung Rizal Monument. So the question here is, what is the Rizal Monument for? Anong purpose ng Rizal Monument? Okay, so kung ang sagot ninyo ay to commemorate Dr. Jose Rizal, uh, that is correct. No, That's one of the functions of the Rizal Monument. Kung ang sagot nyo ay to become a tourist spot, to become a, uh, a historical destination sa city of Manila, you're also correct. That serves as function ng Rizal Monument. So, ang tatandaan natin class for the functions of art is that an inquiry on the function of art is an inquiry on what art is for. Okay? So, when it comes to function, different art forms come with distinctive functions. So, lahat ng mga art forms meron yang distinct, kanya-kanyang functions. There are some art forms are more functional than others. So, ibig sabihin, may mga art forms na mas nagagamit, mas beneficial, mas practical, kumpara sa ibang art forms. So, ang um, functions of art normally fall into three categories. So, we have the physical, the social, and personal. Okay? Tandaan nyo lang yan. Tatlo lang yan. PSP. Physical, social, and personal. So, these categories can can and often do overlap in any given piece of art. So let us begin with the uh, physical function. But before that, so let me just give you this, no? Um, the architecture and applied arts. For these kinds of arts, the value of the art in question lies in the practical benefits one gains from it. Okay? So obviously, Itong mga arts na ito, it's made for a specific purpose. Okay? Yung mga airport, yung mga ginagamit nating sasakyan, okay? yung mga tulay, okay? um, those are made for a specific purpose so that we can gain practical benefits from it. No, we use it for a purpose. Versus yung mga painting and literary arts. Okay? Asabi dito, one can look at the value of the product of art in and for itself. Okay, so typically the value of the painting, the value of a novel, uh, um, ay hindi masyadong nagta-translate into practical benefits. Okay, maaaring may value lang siya, historical value, um, pero not so much of a function. Okay? So, does it mean that uh, paintings and literary works can never have any function? No. Okay. So, ultimo yung uh, nobela ni Dr. Jose Rizal, No Limitangere, and El Felibusterismo, over time, they accrued value. Okay? Libro lang sila, nobela lang sila dati, pero over time, nagkaroon siya ng value and a consequence. And as a consequence, um, nagkaroon siya ng function. Okay? 
So they are functional in so far as they are designed to accomplish some definite end. Was the nolimit ng here? Were the nolimit ng here in el filibusterismo uh, able to accomplish something back in the days? Ayan. So di ba meron naman? So that's why nakaroon sila ng function. All right, so let's begin with the first function, and it's the physical function. So this is the easiest to understand among the three functions. Okay, so works of art that are created to perform some service have physical function. So as you can see here, yung pamaypay, may gamit yan. Pamaypay, minsan pang 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 sagi ng kung ano ano, pang protect from the sun. Okay, pang hampas ng bata, ayan, may function iyan. Same with the cabinet. No, lagay, lalagay yan ng, ng mga gamit, no, taguan ng mga bata, or lalagyan ng pera, patungan ng vase. So, it, it performs some service. So, that this is what we call the physical function. Okay? Social function. Ayan. Okay. So, sa social function naman, class, kailangan natin medyo lawakan at buksan ng ating isipan. Okay? Especially sa mga social issues na meron tayo sa ating bansa or sa ating community or sa, sa ating buong mundo. So, sabi dito, art has a social function when it addresses aspects of collective life as opposed to one's person's point of view or experience. Okay? So, <clears throat> magkakaroon daw ng social function ang isang artwork kapag ito ay sumasalamin or kapag ito ay nag address sa isang um, mga bagay-bagay sa mga bagay-bagay na kung saan may collective interests ang mga tao. Okay? Yung tipong pagtiningnan mo ang isang ang bagay, ito ang iisipin mo at the same time yung other people, that's the same idea that they will get it from that they will get from it. Okay? I'll give you a perfect example later on. Okay? So, photographs containing images of people in conditions that are difficult to see and think about and sometimes satire perform social functions. Okay? So, as you can see here, there are two pictures. The picture on the right, as you can see, it's a clear photograph of one of the um, infamous no? um, tokhang related uh, scenes no? na ito, ito yung naginawa ng painting naging uh, naisali na ito sa teatro sa ibang sa pelikula sa mga TV series <clears throat> so pretty much all Filipinos a lot, a, lot, a lot of Filipinos would understand the message of that this picture sends to us which is the the the, the current state of the, uh, the of the government's war against drugs okay the picture on the left man this is a satire okay this is part of a, a tv series a tv show a competition where the contestant um impersonated you know, one of our past presidents so the the contestant was referencing no gumagamit siya ng mga statements and phrases na only na only very um uh, reflective lamang doon sa taong ginagaya niya okay some of you may may not understand it fully well because some of you were born 2020 <laughs> oo oh um, kapapanganak nyo pa lang yun during time ni GMA so some of you perhaps may not know it but if you do watch it if you watch this show yung Drag Race PH so you would know and then you search a little bit of history of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo what happened during her career as a president so you would know what this impersonator is talking about okay and then finally, we have the personal functions. Yan, okay. Sabi dito, personal functions of art are often the most difficult to explain. Okay? There are many types of personal functions and these are highly subjective. Personal functions of art are not likely to be the same from person to person. Okay, an artist may create a piece out of a need for self-expression or gratification 
Sometimes an artist is only trying to provide an aesthetic experience both for the self and viewers. A piece might be meant to entertain, provoke thought, or even have no particular effect at all. Okay, so personal function, um, um, it, 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 it basically boils down to, to, to you. Okay? Um, <clears throat> may mga, every, whenever an artist, whenever an artist creates something, a piece of art, you know, may function na iyon. At the, at, at the mind of an artist, gumag, meron na siyang function for his or her piece of art. Pero sa iyo as a viewer or ikaw na gumagamit ng art, I, you have your own personal function for that. Okay? So halimbawa, maaring um, uh, ang isang pelikula ay ginawa ginawa ng producer or ng isang filmmaker to send a message na this is what's happening to, to, to the country. But for you, for you, films are um, it's, it's a pastime for you. It's just a hobby. Okay? Nothing more, nothing less. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an avenue, it's a platform for you to, to, to de-stress. Okay? So, hindi mo masyadong sinesteryo sa mga pelikula. Okay? So, yun yung personal function for you ng mga films. Okay? So, again, no? Highly subjective ang personal functions because we have different um, uses of artworks. Okay? Kaya siya highly subjective. So, sir, who is going to determine the function of art? Okay? So, the functions of art apply not only to the artist that created a piece, but to you as the viewer. Okay? So, the other half, the first half, the first half of the function comes from the artist, him or her, himself or herself. The second half of the function comes from you as the viewer or the user. Okay? So, your whole experience and understanding of a piece should contribute to the, to the function you assign it as well as everything you know about its context. So, next time you're trying to understand a piece of art, Try to remember these four points. Yung contexts, yung personal, social, and physical functions. Remember that some art serves only one function and some all three, perhaps even more. Okay. Allow me to give you some images. Gaya na sinabi ko kanina, you know, whenever an artist creates a piece of art, meron na kagad siyang function on top of his mind nakaakibat noong kanyang ginawang art. For example, yung mga applied artists, when they created this kind of foil, what they had in mind was it, ang function lang yan is to, to cover, to protect food, preserve food. Right? But for other people, especially the consumers and the users, they may be using foil for something else. You know what I mean? You know, they may be using it for as a material to do something bad. They may also use it as a material to do something like a piece of art. Okay? Same with the, the clubs, the, the disco bars. No? For whoever made the club, whoever made the restaurant, whoever designed it, um, their intention was to just to really provide entertainment for for the customers for the people okay but for the consumers it's something else for the people especially the general public iba ang ang mensahe na pinapadala ng mga club no it could be a uh, pugad ng prostitution it could be a um uh, pugad for sex, sex trafficking no yung social function nating na sinasabi and of course, itong puting van. No? Do I need to explain this to you? <laughs> okay. So the puting van, oh, the applied artists, uh, industrial designers specifically, no, when they created the vans, it's just to you know help 
people get from point A to point B. Okay? Pero iba ang social function niya ngayon, iba ang social message. Okay? Pag nakakakita tayo ng puting van, ay iba na ang ibig sabihin nun. Tumakbo ka na. Okay. So, I hope we get to clarify, no, on how we determine the function of art. So, but, but, ano yan? It still boils down to our personal tastes and references. Okay? How about music, sir? Ano bang function or functions ng music? Okay? So, kung... Um, when we talk about music class, no, I, I want you to, 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 to think of the yung music na hindi lang contemporary, music na dapat ancient lang din, medieval, uh, during the early period of time. No? Huwag tayong makulong sa K-pop or sa P-pop or sa OPM, huwag tayong makulong sa what is the music now. Dapat we also consider the music before. So, madaming functions ang music, no? Principally used for dance and religion. Uh, and even before, no? They saw music as an important instrument to facilitate worship and invocation to gods. In fact, music was essential for synchronicity of dancers. And music guarantees that warriors were simultaneous. Yan. Kung napanood niyo yung isang Chinese movie, The, the Wall... The wall ata yun, no? Yung may uh, na, nadakip silang dalawang British guys na gusto lang nilang parang uh, may na-discover silang magnet, something like that. And then, nung nalaman nila, kaya pala may wall dahil as a protection for uh, monsters. No? Mon monsters. And then, yung mga Chinese warriors, they were fighting the monsters um, habang sila is nasunod sa sa music. Okay. Yung tipong pagtalo nila mula doon sa tuktok ng wall pa baba, lagi sumasabay sila sa music. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um I hope we are clear with the um, functions of art. So, we now proceed to the subjects of art. Okay? Pag sinabing subjects of art, we're not talking about anong subject like PE or <laughs> okay or um, uh, math English hindi ganun ang subject ha okay ha we're talking about different subject here when we talk about subject we are talking about you know any person object scene or event described or represented in a work of art you know what is the central uh, character who what or who is the central character or um, um, object that can be seen in your piece of art so basically the subject is the essence of a piece of art okay madami mga art forms na of course obviously when you see it alam nyo na kung sino yung character sino yung subject sino yung um, um, sino yung makikita natin right off the bat no pero not all arts have subjects okay hindi lahat ng arts ay may subjects so that's why we have what we call the representational or the objective and then the non-representational or non-objective arts so yung una these are pertaining to arts that have subjects Halimbawa na dyan, mga painting, sculpture, literature, theater, arts, music videos, etc., etc. So, of course, mga painting, may mga subject yan, di ba? Nagpipinta ka ng babae, o yung babae yung subject mo. Sa sculpture, nag, uh, nag, uh, naghulma ka ng palaka, o yung palaka yung subject mo. Literature, sino bang bida sa kwento, si malakas at si maganda, o sila yung subject mo. Okay? Theater arts, music videos, the same. So these are the arts na may subjects. They are called representational or objective. Meron din naman tayo yung non-representational or non-objectives. This is the opposite, no? Pertaining to arts that have no subjects. Okay? So music. Music. Okay? Guys, when we talk, when we talk about music, we're not talking about uh, song. Ha, we're talking about music, yung yung talagang ano talaga, yung tunog, tama ba? Yung tunog lang. 
Tunog. Walang lyrics. Uh, music. Architecture. Obviously, walang walang subject sa architecture. Because you're just designing. Okay? You're just designing. And also, yung mga applied arts. Okay? Walang, wala tayong mga subject dyan. Okay. Now, um, through the... Um, uh, as, as time passes by, no, ang mga artists ngayon ay nag-transition na from non-representational to representational, especially sa pagdating sa painting. Okay? So, di ba ang painting, kanina sabi ko, example siya ng representational, ibig sabihin may subject. But, mind you, may mga paintings na walang subject. As you can see in the slide, ito yung mga examples ng mga paintings na walang subject. Okay? So, parang abstract siya. You know, nagiging playful yung mga artists sa kanilang ginagawang art. No? Itong painting sa taas, hindi natin malaman kung ano ba ito. Is it a brain cell? Mga, mga gamo-gamo? Or what? O mga buhok na kulay brown? We have no idea what it is. Itong painting din nasa baba, yung piece of art, we, we, we don't know exactly what these are. Ano puto bumbong ba ito? Mga planeta? So, we don't know exactly the subject. So, in this case, ang mga painting ay considered as representational and at the same time, non-representational art. Okay. So, ano ba ang mga kadalasang subjects na ginagamit ng mga artists sa art? Yan, napakadami natin. Yes. About syempre, madami tayong mga examples na ibibigay sa inyo mga madlang people. Okay, so we have the landscapes, the seascapes, and cityscapes. Napaka ver very, ano siya, no? Very, um, uh, nakakawala ng stress, nakakawala ng pagod. I don't know, pleasing to the eyes lang when you see landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes. Especially mga concrete jungle, yung mga syudad. Okay. So, uh, artists have always been fascinated with their physical environment and the modern painters seem to be attracted to scenes in cities. Other subjects would be still life. Okay? Pag sinabi natin class na still life, still, hindi gumagalaw. Okay? Ito yung mga inanimate objects arranged in an indoor setting. Yes, yan. Ito yung mga pang Instagram. Okay, Ginag ginagawa natin sa Instagram. No? So, today the focus is on the exciting arrangement and combinations of the object shapes and colors. Okay, hindi ako masyadong kagalingan sa mga ganyan. Simple lang ako. Um, basta pantay ang ano, ang aking kuha, go na ako niyan. Okay? So, still life yung mga inanimate objects. Animals, of course. No? Ang animals have been represented by artists from almost every age and place. In fact, the earliest known paintings are representations of animals on the walls of caves. Now, remember yung very first painting, no? Baboy Ramosa, Indonesia. <clears throat> and animals have been used as symbols in conventional religious art. Yes. Okay, so as you can see here, like for example, yung dove or yung kalapate, it, it symbolizes more than just an animal. It symbolizes um, 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 Christ. No, it symbolizes uh, purity. Same with the lamb. No, S lamb symbolizes Christ as well. Um, dito sa Filipino context naman. Um, when we when may mga Filipino painters. Dahil wala namang tupa dito. <laughs> Di ba? At ang kalapate, it's not so much of a very Filipino animal. Ang mga kadalasang animals na nasa painting ay mga kalabaw at mga tandang or mga manok. Okay? So, ang kalabaw ay yung talagang original man's best friend dahil kasama yan ng mga magsasaka sa pag-aani. Okay? Portraits. Yeah, and portraits. Of course, uh, people have always been intrigued by the human face as an index of the owner's character 
as an instrument of expression, it is capable of showing a variety of moods and feelings. Nakakatuwa, no? Over the period of time, nag evolve talaga yung artists. Nakakakita tayo ng talagang unique and creativity among many artists nowadays. Dati, lapis lang, pangkulay, watercolor, pastel, or oil. Yun ang kadalasang ginagamit. But now, you see artists using leaves. Dahon, gumagamit ng um, ano buto ng pakwan, <laughs> di ba? Mga kung ano buto. And even coffee, no? Coffee grains, no? Nescafe, gumagamit uh, to <clears throat> to draw something. Figures. Ayan. Figures. So, many many people nowadays, no? When, whenever you see a sculpture or a painting na nude ang kanilang character or subject i we 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 tend to to push it over we tend not to uh, classify it as a piece of art no um but when in fact you know um it has been traditional it has been a traditional subject of art yung katawang ng tao whether it is nude or clothes, no, nakabihis or nakahubad. So the body's form, structure, and flexibility offer the, uh, no, the, artists, the artist a big challenge to depict it in a variety of ways, ranging from the idealistic as in the classical Greek sculptures to the most abstract. Okay? So may, may ano pa din, mayroon pa ding a fine line, no? Uh, to to differentiate uh, an art okay as compared to just a, a a piece of rubbish no na um you would you would see it naman eh no you would see on how the the the, the painting how the photograph was created or was made and you would see which one is art and which one is not okay Mm-hmm. Everyday life. Of course, very common din ito na ginagawang subject sa mga um, pieces of art. No? Um, ang mga artists ay nagpapakita uh, din na kanilang deep concern about life around them. Many of them have recorded in paintings their observation of people going about their usual ways and performing their usual tasks. Madami nito, no? especially sa TikTok, nakikita mo mga artist na ang kanilang subject ay mga everyday of life. Mga sumasakay ng tren, um, mga nagsiserve ng pagkain sa restaurant, okay, um, uh, traffic, especially traffic, no, very common iyan. Even the marites, no, syempre, sino di makakalimot sa ating mga marites. History and legend, of course, um, <clears throat> Madami-dami na rin mga pieces of art ang nagawa na kung saan ang subject ay mga uh, historical and legendary. Okay? Um, so, importante din ito kasi uh, this is one way of passing history, tradition from one generation to another. No? For example, um, imagine mo na lang in, in a, few, a few decades from now, would, would kids still know malakasin maganda? You know, just try to think about that. Kasi kung ngayon, kilala nyo si malakas ito maganda, it means that na-expose kayo sa literature or sa history ni malakas ito maganda. Okay? And that's exactly the one of the things that we need to do. We need to continuously pass down um, legends and histories to our future generations may it be in the form of literature yung mga sulat-sulat in the form of painting mas maganda yung painting kasi uh, talagang mga drawings no? kasi talagang mas magiging may mas impact yun para sa mga um, gustong matuto okay kasi ma-visualize nila kung yung itsura ni malakas at maganda so as you can see here, no, we have paintings of malakas at maganda. Your first picture. The second painting is a, uh, uh, a painting of um, Bernardo Carpio. Yan. May nakaisip ba sa inyo no? Bernardo Carpio, yes. The legendary man from na sa Montalban, no? Na sanhi daw talaga ng mga lindol before. Again, these are legends. No? These are only legends. 
And then of course, we have religion and mythology. No, gamit na gamit yan, syempre sa mga um, uh, sa mga painting, sa mga art, sa, sa mga salamin ng mga simbahan. Okay? Uh, they are used in aid to aid in worship, to instruct, to inspire feelings of devotion, and to impress and convert non-believers. Yan. And then finally, we have, of course, dreams and fantasies. So, I, I'm not sure exactly kung ano yung tawag sa mga artists na ang kanilang subject lagi ay mga dreams and fantasies. But somehow, um, they are very interesting. They're very non-conventional um, because it they allow us to see things that we don't normally see. No? Um, wala pa naman siguro nakakita kay mata kay kamatayan di ba but but we have artworks that depicts death no so ayan binibigyan nila tayo ng lifelike situation okay so napakadami napakadami mga subjects of arts uh, na pwede natin pagpilian so you are not limited to just your crush or your your parents or your home you are uh, the, the whole world around you can be your subject and even your you know your subconscious whatever you have in your conscious mind can be part of your pieces of art okay you always remember that um, when you are um, doing something an artwork um, the, the whole world is going to be your playground yes okay I hope we we learned something new today and I'm just really happy I I got to record this for all of you. I hope you will take time to watch this. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye for now. Have a great day. Bye-bye.